Thank you so much. God bless you. Praise the Lord. The joy to be together again. And I pray that the Lord will impart every life with unction from above, power from above, anointing from above, even this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord brought you here. Your being here is not an accident. And I pray that the purpose and the reason for the Lord bringing you here, it will fulfill in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you and bless your name. We know that us, anyone here, being here, being in ministry, is by your divine purpose. And we pray, the reason you called us into ministry, and the reason you placed us where we are, and the reason you have called us, even till now we have that present assurance that your hand is upon every life. We're asking, oh Lord, everything that you want to fulfill, everything you want to do, everything you want to put in place in this, a single personal life, do it in Jesus' name. Take hold of everyone. And let everyone so yield to you that the supernatural will be manifested in every life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. God bless you. Let's sit down. When we sing the song, let others see Jesus in me. You know, sometimes a child is walking, just a little child. And as that little child is moving, somebody says, I see a champion in that child. The child has not even done anything, affected anything, planted anything, learned anything, or acted out the life and the courage of a champion. Somebody, a girl, is moving, and then you say, I see the mother in that child. Her status, the status of the mother, and the state of the mother, and the way this daughter carries herself. I see the successful mother in this child. When we say, let others see Jesus in me, what to represent Christ. Not just in the life we live, in the calling that we have. And here, look at Jesus, the way he taught. I see Jesus in this minister. And the way he heals, I see Jesus in this man, in this woman. And the way he stands for the truth, courageous, with conviction that you cannot beat back, I see Jesus in him. And I want to tell you today, let the world see Jesus in you. Let the people in the evangelistic field, here they are gathered, don't let them see you as the ordinary one. Let them see Jesus in you. Are you standing to teach in the church? The way you teach, the material you teach, everything you teach, let the church see Jesus in you. That's why today we come to this message, Reviving Christ's Timeless Ministry in the Present Day Minister. Here we are, Present Day Ministers of the Lord. And if Christ were here, what would he be doing? Let the world, let your audience, let the sinners, let the sick, let the depressed, let the oppressed see Jesus in you. If they don't see Jesus in you, and they only see you, your weak self, your doubting self, your unbelieving self, your undependable self we're not in ministry we're in ministry when we allow the people 
that will minister to when they see Jesus in us. When Herod heard of Jesus, he said, John the Baptist has arisen because I killed him. He's gone. And now he's risen again so that all that I'm hearing, nobody can do something like this except somebody who had died and come back again. When we're revived, when we're resurrected, when the dead courage in us and the dead anointing in us, when it is revived and then we minister like Christ would have ministered, then somebody will say, it's like Jesus is risen again. He's still alive. I said he's still alive. It's alive in you. It's alive in me. And that's the purpose this time, reviving the timeless ministry of Christ in us, the present day minister. We're looking at Matthew chapter 4 verse 23. What was the ministry of Christ? And Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues, teaching and preaching the gospel of the kingdom preaching and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people he was teaching he was preaching he was healing if he came back here and he wanted to do the work to bring people into the kingdom he'll continue that same ministry to teach and to preach and to heal we're looking at matthew chapter 9 verse 35 matthew chapter 9 verse 35 and Jesus went about all the cities and villages. If Jesus came back here today, he will not stay in a particular place, in a single place. He'll be doing what he did before. He'll be going about all the cities and the villages. What will he be doing? Teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness every disease among the people and then he tells us in verse 36 but when he saw the multitudes it was moved with compassion on them because they fainted he'll be having compassion if he were here today and he says because they fainted and they were scattered abroad a sheep having no shepherd verse 37 in verse 37 then said he unto his disciples the harvest truly is plenteous but the laborers are few verse 38 pray ye therefore that the Lord of the harvest, that the Lord of the harvest, the Lord is interested in the harvest and he wants us to go into the harvest field and he wants the harvest to be reaped into the kingdom of God. Pray ye therefore that the Lord of the harvest and the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into the harvest and when he sends forth laborers into the harvest he'll be expecting them to do what jesus christ had been doing the ministry of christ being reproduced in them teaching and preaching and healing we're told in second corinthians chapter 5 reading from verse 18 and it tells us all things of god who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Look at the first part. He reconciles us to himself by Jesus Christ and now he has given us the same ministry of reconciliation. Verse 19, in verse 19 it says to we, that is, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and he has committed unto us. He has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Christ came to reconcile the world, the world of sinners, 
unto God, the holy God of heaven. And now he has committed unto us that same ministry of Christ. The word of reconciliation, verse 20. In verse 20 it says, now then we are ambassadors for Christ. We're going for Christ. We're going to do what Christ wants us to do. And we're going to call sinners into the kingdom. As though God did beseech you by us, we plead with you, we pray you in Christ's stage. That is what Christ would have done. We are now standing in the place, in stage of Christ. In Christ said, be ye reconciled to God. You can tell from those verses we have read that we need to revive, we need to resurrect, we need to put in place Christ's timeless ministry as we are the present day minister. Three points we're looking at. Number one, his transforming ministry, seeking and saving sinners that's what he did and that's what he has called us to do number two his transnational ministry of healing and helping sufferers transnational that is the ministry of christ went from the nation of israel and other nations too were reached and Thought. In fact, it says, the Gentiles shall trust in his name. And because those Gentiles, there were other nations, and that they will trust his name, he will save them. Look at the centurion. The centurion, not an Israelite, his ministry was transnational. He caught across the nation of Israel. Look at the Syrophoenician woman and came, and the Lord said, I cannot give the bread of the children to the dogs. He, she was coming from another nation. The nation of Israel referred to as the children, and the Gentile nations referred to as the dogs. And eventually the woman said, yes lord now understand understand jesus died for the whole world he was going to bring his ministry to the whole world but at that time it was the time of israel to the jew first and then to the gentiles and because it was to the jew first that's why jesus said what he said but uh, the woman will not go just like that. It's just like Elisha that wanted the double portion of the Spirit of God. That wasn't the dispensation. That dispensation was to come and all that time. And yet, even when people are living in one dispensation, people can come from outside that dispensation like Naaman and have the leprosy taken away because they know God eventually will give it to the other nations I might as well come now and the woman said yes Lord but the dogs see each of the crumbs that fall from the master's table and Jesus said great is your faith and she received the blessing. The ministry of Christ was just for Israel and then for the people outside Israel. The Samaritans also, they were blessed of the Lord. And because the ministry of Christ was transnational. Number three, his transferable ministry of teaching and training the saints and training his servants. He came not just to teach and stop there. He wanted to develop people. He wanted to raise up people, the people that will see everything that he did so that they'll be well trained and then he can pass that ministry onto them and tell them now, I've taught you, I've trained you, now you can go into all the world and teach the people of the world so number one now number one is the transforming transforming ministry 
of seeking and saving sinners. Luke chapter 19 verse 10. In Luke chapter 19 verse 10, the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. That's our ministry. It's called us so that we will do what he was committed to doing. John chapter 20 verse 21. In John chapter 20 verse 21, then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me to seek and to save the lost, as my Father hath sent me, even so have I sent you, even so as he sent or sent I you. Three things we're looking at here. Number one, Christ's compassion to seek and to save. Number two, compelling commission to seek like the Savior. As my Father has sent me, so send I you. Number three, cleansed creatures sought, saved, sanctified. Number one. Number one, Christ's compassion to seek and to save. Christ's compassion to seek and to save. That's why he was born. That's why he came. And she shall bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. Jehovah saves. Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. That's why he came. That's why you have come into the ministry. That's why the Lord laid hands on you. And he said, you will stand for me. You will be instead of me. And you will do what I would have been doing if I was still physically present in the world to save his people from their sins. Now, we're called by different titles. But you see, many of those titles are not in the New Testament. But whatever title we're called, we're called to be this or that or that in the church. Good, fine. Beyond that title, beyond that understanding of this is what I'm supposed to do, we're to do what Jesus would have done if Jesus were here in the world. Philip was chosen to be this. And the leadership of the church expected him to be that. That's all right. To distribute food, somebody else would do that. But he was filled with the Holy Ghost. Anybody could do that. But the church put him, this is what to do. Whatever his title, the church did not see him as an evangelist. And yet, he went to Samaria when persecution broke out. And he did the work of an evangelist as effectively as Peter would have done it in Samaria. As effectively as Jesus would have done it in Samaria. Whatever your title, be faithful, be loyal, be dutiful, and do it well. But understand, even though you are successful in that area, the Lord has called you that you were standing for him that you will do what he would have been doing and you will be saving the lost. We're looking at uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1, reading from verse 1. It says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God, our Savior, and our Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. The grace of our Lord. By grace are we saved. 
but that's not the end by the grace of god i am what i am and i labored more abundantly than they all we receive grace and we're saved praise the lord i'm saved that's not the end of the outworking of the grace of god in our lives we're still to stand for christ not just to live a good life that's necessary we have to live righteous lives without holiness no man shall save the lord but the grace of god is not limited to living a righteous life a holy life we have to move on into the harvest field and then we can say by the grace of god i am what i am look at verse 16 in verse 16 it tells us how be it for this cause I obtained mercy that in me falls. Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe. Hereafter believe. Hereafter believe. That is the people that will believe after Paul the Apostle had written all those epistles and he had gone the people that will believe hereafter will also have paul as a pattern as an example that he got the grace of god for salvation but he must not stop there he must get the grace of god for service and it's the service of saving so for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting we're looking at number two here number two uh, is a compelling commission to seek like the savior to seek like the savior have you noticed uh, what the new testament has uh, taught it says if we say that we are in him we must walk like a world that's first john chapter 2 verse 16 verse 6. if we say we abide in christ we're children of god we must look at his life look at his walk walking and look at his work and look at his service and look at what he consecrated he devoted himself to and we must be like him. He even tells us, he says, we're seated in heavenly places with Christ. And if we're raised so high to sit in heavenly places like Christ, we cannot say, I cannot do what he did. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Everything he had, he said, anyone that believes in me, the work I do, he shall do. He expects that we will stand in his place, will preach like he preached, will teach like he taught, will heal like he healed, we will do what he would have been doing if he were in the world today. But you know, there's something we call conditioning. When you've done something once, twice, thrice, many times you're used to that and you are you settle down in your comfort zone you keep on doing that and you enjoy that and you're successful in that when you now hear that what you should have been doing yes what you're doing is good but you should have climbed up come up naturally you feel some discomfort when you begin to, when you are told this is the compelling challenge and the compelling commission this is what you are to do and that's what happened to peter he was comfortable on the day of pentecost all those people were jewish people even jewish people in diaspora they came and then the holy ghost came on him and he preached to them and 3,000 got converted. That's good. And then in the land of Israel, everywhere he went, he went to that place, Juppa, went to that other place. He felt at ease. And now the Lord wanted him to do what Christ would have done in the Gentile world. He said, no, Lord, never have i done that uh, there are some people that will never do what they have not done before and, and god said rise up 
kill and eat. He said, no, I cannot. Nothing like that has entered my mouth before. And God said, what God has cleansed, do not call that common or unclean. It happened the second time. And sometimes one message may wake us up, and then we'll go back to sleep. Another message will come in the same direction. God saying the same thing. We rise up, we go back to sleep. And then the third time, the compelling power of the Lord so comes on us that we have to arise and go. And we think those are Gentiles, those are people in darkness, those are idol worshippers. They will not hear. And eventually, when we feel the compelling power of the Lord, and we get there, and then Cornelius said, not only me, I've gathered other Gentiles together that will speak to us. Whatever the Lord wants you to say, go ahead, tell us, we're ready and we're willing. Even the Jewish people did not have that kind of submission to the, uh, to the message of the gospel. They said, have we not told you to shut up your mouth? You feel Jerusalem with your doctrine. And the people that uh, Peter thought were not qualified for the message, when Peter got to them, they were all seated. They had made their own publicity. They had made their own gathering. The point is, as the Lord is giving us this compelling call now we must not remain behind and feel the discomfort we must arise if you hear what you have not heard before you will not say can I do that I've never had something like that before I never felt I should you know replace uh, uh, represent Christ to the point I teach I preach I heal like he did and Jesus came and speak unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth what all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And then when he said that, if you read Mark and Luke, he went back to heaven. But there's no sick person in heaven. There's no sinner in heaven. And all power is given unto me in earth and in heaven. What it meant is that power I now give unto you. The sinners are not in heaven and he has gone to heaven and you are here and you represent him and he gives that power to you so that you can do what he would have been doing with that power. Look at verse 19. After saying all power is given unto him, he said, go ye therefore. Therefore, because of all the power is in me. And I am in you. A minister is passed on to glory now. In his lifetime, there was somebody having cancer. And as uh, that person was having cancer, he had been afraid before to pray for anyone having uh, such a problem. And the Lord showed him a vision. He saw himself, he saw himself stretching hands like this. And then he saw Christ coming, that announced to him, I am Christ. As he kept his hand like that, Jesus also made his hand like that, and came and entered into him. The hands of Jesus going into his hands, the body of Jesus going into his body, and the head of Jesus going into his head, and then the vision ceased. And the Lord told him, Christ has all power, and he has entered into you. When he got the meaning of the revelation, he went to that cancer patient, like Christ would have done. 
laid hands on her instantaneously the woman was healed the lord is telling us you are in me i am in you all power belongs to me go ye therefore with that understanding and teach all nations you know he had told them earlier do not go to the gentiles only go to the house of israel in matthew chapter 10 but now after calvary now after the crucifixion and the death and the resurrection of christ after he said all power is given unto me and you go therefore i am not limited you are not limited get out of the comfort zone and even if you feel the discomfort of the new assignment that your psychological go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost in verse 20 it tells us in verse 20 teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you whatsoever you have heard me teach christ said that don't you say well i'm not christ he taught that i'm just he's a follower i cannot do that he affected that i cannot i'm just a servant he said whatsoever i have taught whatsoever i have preached and whatsoever i have commanded you and lo i am with you how often always even unto the end of the world what does that mean unto the end of the world it means we in this generation were included were included not only the apostles not only the uh, those uh, early ministers of the gospel there are some people that say that yes christ healed at that time yes christ touched this at that time but we now in this generation we cannot do that again he said i am with you with all the power with all the strength with all the anointing i am with you even to the end of the world and uh, you know the uh, the gospel concludes with amen and i too i say amen we're coming to luke chapter 14 verse 23 luke chapter 14 verse 23 and the lord said unto the servant go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in and compel them to come in you know christ himself he compelled those disciples and apostles he compelled them to come and he came Matthew was at the receipt of customs and his presence and his proclamation when he called him compelled Matthew if you are being compelled then you have the right to compel others if you receive the compelling commission and the compelling command of the lord you will not have any um, authority to say to another person and to compel them to come because the grace of god came to them and they were compelled to come into the kingdom when they went out now they could compel others i pray that the compelling commission will take effect in your life in jesus name and then we will do for them what christ has done in our lives he compelled us and then we can go and compel others have you noticed about uh, moses moses go to pharaoh because i am come to deliver them it's good lord you have the power you can go and deliver them you have my approval my appointment go bring out the children of israel out of egypt no i cannot lord yes you will no i won't i'm not a good speaker they won't listen to me and god said okay put your hand there 
became leprous, put it again, was clear, yet Lord sent who you will send. What's in your hand there? A rod pointing to that thing, uh, the water will become blood. All the same, Lord, I cannot. And the Lord said, don't I know Aaron? I could have told him, all right, I tell him to assist you. And the Lord compelled him. And because he yielded to the compelling commission, he now went to Pharaoh and he compelled Pharaoh. Let my people go. No, they won't. And no, I won't. That's how Moses himself was responded. And they went to him again, let my people go. And the man said, no. And miracles, miracles, miracles of judgment began to come upon Egypt. And eventually, he called Moses and said, you can go. And as you go, pray for me also. If you are compelled and you yield to the compulsion of the Spirit of God, you will have the authority and the power to go and compel other people. And when you preach, they'll be compelled to come into the kingdom in Jesus' name. Hey, look at this, look at this. Compel them to come in that my house may be filled. The house of God, not just the building, the house of God is not filled yet. There are sinners outside. There are other sheep I have which must come into this fold and them I will bring to fill up my house. And he has called you now with a compelling commission so you cannot sit back, so you cannot say I'm tired. How can you be tired when his house, when his kingdom has not be filled? That's why he's still waiting. He should have come. He said, I'm coming again. And then he looks down from heaven and my house is not field yet and the people have given the compelling commission they're still on the job and when his house is filled then he'll be ready to come we're looking at number three here number three we're looking at cleansed creatures sought saved and sanctified he seeks us he seeks the sinners through us and then when they come they are saved when they come they are turned around and when they come they are sanctified first john chapter one reading from verse seven in first john chapter one verse seven but if we walk in the light, the people we're bringing into the kingdom, we don't just leave them like that. They don't understand anything about the light. That's why we do follow up. That's why we do discipleship. And now we bring them, we show them the way, we show them the light, and the grace of God, we point the grace of God to them, and the way we can get that grace of God will point to them. And now they begin to walk in the light. If we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we're not permitted to walk in a different kind of light, a lower level of light. We're not permitted to walk in a way that we I'm a Christian, but you know, I cannot do what Christ has been doing. I cannot live the way Christ has been living. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. We're coming to point number two. In point number two, we're looking at his transnational ministry of healing and helping sufferers. We're told in John chapter 14, verse 10. In John 14, verse 10, believest thou not that I am in the Father? I am in the Father. Let us think about that. When the word of God says we are 
in Christ. We don't feel Christ around us. We don't see physically Christ around us exactly as Jesus Christ was in the Father. And the Father was in heaven. We know that because when he was baptized, as he was coming out of the water, a voice comes from it's in heaven. Here is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Being in the Father was not a physical, natural thing that, okay, if it's in the Father, the Father has relocated to earth. And the Father has enveloped himself, has enveloped Jesus with himself. No, it's a spiritual thing and it is by faith. And Jesus knew by faith not by feeling and we know by faith not by feeling that we are in Christ and Christ in us Christ has all the power has all the anointing has all the authority and we are in Christ like that uh, revelation the Lord showed to uh, John Austin was uh, passed on to glory now that Christ entered into him the same way christ we don't have to see any revelation or anything he has entered into us you are in christ and what christ would have been doing you have to do you will do when we first started writing and he showed us how to write a b c we couldn't write very well. Some, the teacher had to hold our hand uh, with the pencil and move it like that. And we wrote A. And we did it again. It wasn't comfortable because the fingers were not used to writing anything. But as we write now, look at it. We just write anything we want to write. It comes to your mind. You know how to write. Nobody holds your hand now. The same thing. Christ is in you. And you are in Christ. And when you begin to do what Christ did and what Christ will have been doing now, it may take you time. It happens slowly. And you may have to hold your hand. You may have to redirect your mouth, what you say. And new things that you have to do, it may be slow. It may be gradual. Eventually, it becomes your second nature. I said it becomes your second nature. Is that first time we have to, you know, push ourselves to, I must do this. Christ is in me. He will do it through me. Amen. Yeah. If our teacher at that time showed us the first time, and he said, now I've showed you, go back home. Don't, you don't have to come back to school anymore. We will, will forget how to write the alphabet. Well, we came again, we came again, we came again. Everything we're hearing now, and you're going to begin to write the alphabets of success. You're going to begin to write the alphabets of victory and triumph. But if just this one meeting is what will come and we'll say, you don't have to listen or read the Bible or do anything anymore, we will forget. You will not forget. You will begin. You begin, it will be slow. Keep on doing it. You will become a champion in the kingdom. It says, believest thou not that I mean, the Father and the Father in me, the words that I speak unto you. I speak not of myself. Look at what Jesus is telling us. He's training the disciples. Because those disciples and us, the words were speak, that the words were spoke yesterday. They're already ingrained in us. And once we continue to speak, the words we always spoke, I cannot. I am not able. I shouldn't think too much of myself. I am not like Reverend so and so. I'm not like Bishop so and so. Once we continue to say that, 
what we got is what we'll continue to get but then we we'll say what will christ say because christ said is in the father and the words he spoke he did not speak of himself but <clears throat> but the father that dwells in me already has said i am in the father and the father is in me he repeats Station makes for confirmation when you repeat to, your, to yourself again that the Father, not that He dwelt in the past, not that He will dwell in me in the future, now dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. He never thinks, He doeth the works. He, he never fails he doeth the work and so when you go to any other place to minister christ dwells in me the words i speak the works that is not me i might feel tired but that does not matter i might feel weary does not matter and maybe i'm sweating there that does not matter i might feel hungry that does not matter after all the words i'm going to speak is not they are not my words and the work that is going to be done is not my work the christ that dwelleth in me he doeth the works you experience miracle every time look at verse 12 in verse 12 verily verily i say unto you he that believeth on me the works that i do he shall do also we stand in his place that what he did that's what we will do and then it says son greater works than these shall he do greater works than these shall he do how can that be it's not you he lives inside you and if he confronts any problem greater than what he did yesterday if any challenge comes greater than what he did in his earthly ministry he is the one that is doing it and so greater works will lead you because he abides and he dwells in you greater works than this shall lead you because tell me because I can't hear you. You are not opening your Bible. This is John chapter 14, verse 12. Greater works natural than these shall he do because not because it becomes taller, not becomes it becomes more educated, not because he fills his mind with theology not because he's called by a new title the new title does not convey or confer anything on anyone it is because i go unto my father and while i'm with my father i dwell in them i pray that this ministry will be born burst in you in jesus name Three things we're looking at. Number one, the supernatural healing of incurable sicknesses. That's what he did. That is what you will do. Number two, the sustained sanity for insane sufferers. That's what he did and that's what you will do. Number three is the strengthening help for the inner self, inner state, the inner man. Look at number one there. Number one, we're looking at the supernatural healing of incurable sicknesses. We know the story about this woman, the woman with an issue of blood and a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years. 12 years. And we know the story and she visited many physicians nothing better and yet she said if i only touch the hem of his garment i shall be made whole and was made she was made whole it was incurable but the lord cured her by the faith 
he had about Jesus. How did she have the faith? She was hearing testimonies of other people. And when she had heard of Jesus, how do we have the faith? When we hear the word of God, it says faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Not hearing the ideas of theologians. Miracle days have gone. Miracles will never happen again. Um, the miracles were happening at that time because the Bible had not been fully written. Now the Bible is fully written, therefore no miracles anymore. If you listen to those uh, theologians and to those preachers, explain the Bible away, explain the miracles away, faith goes by hearing, hearing by the word of those theologians. But if you want to have faith, faith comes by hearing the right thing. Hearing the words of Jesus, hearing the ministry of Jesus, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And as we hear that, faith is born in us. Now that I have heard that Jesus, even though I don't feel him, like I don't feel my intestines, I don't feel my nerves, I don't feel my muscles, I don't feel my heart that is walking and you know sending blood to every part and sending blood to my brain. I don't feel the presence of my brain that is being activated and refreshed, but the blood that goes in there and the air that goes in there, the oxygen that goes in there. I I don't feel anything the same thing i don't feel that christ but i know christ has said i am in you and you are in me as the father was in me so am i in you because i believe that and the word of god generates and brings up that faith in my heart i can do what he says i can do can you say that with me i can do what he says i can do and you will be what he has ordained you will be in jesus name he killed the incurable now you are standing in this place and you will heal the incurable as well in jesus name master master i brought this my son to your disciples and they could not heal him. And so, I bring him to you now. If you can do anything, the man was limiting the activity of Christ to the failure of his disciples. When he said, if you can do anything, please have compassion on us and help us. That word, if. The Lord threw it back to him. If you can only believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Anytime we put if, if, I, if, I, if, what does that, what does that mean? I failed. When you say if, you're looking at the past and you're looking at something you are not able to do and you say, I failed. I F, and when you are asking for any other thing you bring that failure of the past I failed and then you bring it to if Jesus said take that out of your mouth amen, amen. if since we're using if you can only believe all things are possible to him that believeth he did it you will do it look at number two here number two we're looking at the sustained sanity for insane sufferers those who have been insane the lunatics and you didn't ever think you could do anything you know miracles do not depend on your personality you know, there are people that have great great personalities and they can shout and they can talk 
and he can move and walk like soldiers trained soldiers and then they come with that kind of ability and power and they shout and the natural shouting of the natural personality does not move evil spirits but whatever your personality you have faith that christ this is what christ will do and because now i represent christ he lives in me and i live in him it's by the power of that holy ghost in you and you might talk with low voice you might talk with your natural voice you don't have uh, to take the voice of a bishop the voice of a of an archbishop and the voice of a religious reverend we don't need that you don't need that you can use your natural voice and the fire of the holy ghost in you and the power of the holy ghost in you will mix with those words and your words will burn like fire and all those evil spirits they are come out in jesus name in mark chapter 5 verse 15 and they come to jesus and you see him that was 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 possessed with the devil and arch that legion thousands of them sitting and clothed in his right mind he had an insane mind, a twisted mind, a violent mind. But now, Christ drove that evil spirit away. Through you, he will do it. If you don't believe what you believe, go out and find somebody that had any challenge like that. Don't speak your own word. Speak the words of Jesus. Have the consciousness. Christ, the deliverer, lives in me. And you speak that word, that demons possessed person, that is sin person, will be delivered in Jesus' name. In fact, when they saw the sanity that had come to that man, they were afraid. The Lord has now passed it into your hand. He has given us the power. He has given us the authority. Matthew chapter 10, reading from verse 1. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power. He gave them, tell me out aloud, against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness. He didn't limit the sickness to this or that. Again, even those who believe in healing, <coughs> they sometimes they tell us that when he gives power to heal, he gives this person power to open, open, open um, blind eyes. This other person, he gives him power to make the lame walk. This other person, he gives him the power to heal cancer. Not really. He gives us power to heal everything he could have healed if we he were here in the world today. We're representing him. We're his hands. We're his mouth. And we're his ambassadors. He gives us power to heal all manner of disease like he had done. How about those who only see majority of their miracles, only blind eyes? What happened is that when they prayed and the blind eyes opened, they were happy. Had power to open blind eyes through Christ. And next time, because they succeeded there, 
they pray for that again until they see themselves as specialists no he doesn't want you to be a specialist the other fellow is prayed for cancer patient and the cancer patient was healed and then he prayed for cancer patient again the cancer patient was healed it's like our students our students they get to school and they see that they find it easy to read literature books and so uh, they think themselves i have literature brain the other fellow has you know he saw himself picking up things and joining things and all that mathematics and analysis i have mathematics brain no you have the brain that can handle anything you set your mind on people specialize but you know christ gave them the power to cast evil spirit out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease that's what he has given you we may have the brain to study mathematics but we don't exercise that and we tell ourselves i am not a stuff for that we may have the brain to read shakespeare and then we're able to repeat and get lessons from all those performances of Shakespeare and we limit ourselves to that. We may have, uh, you know, the mind and we can put the grammar together, the tenses together and we say, I'm an English student. That's all right, that's all right. But you can do the other thing too. And from today, you will arise and do the other things we're looking at number three here number three we're looking at the strengthening help of the inner man inner stage and the lord once he touches us from within will be strong on the inside in jesus name ephesians chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 16 ephesians chapter 3 verse 16 that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man what goes on inside us produces what happens outside us the words will speak the people here, the words of assurance and the word of confidence and the word of faith and the word of authority is not the tongue that produces that, it's the inner man. The assurance and the courage and the strength and the ability is not we see not what we see outside that gives us that courage you might see something that should normally bring discouragement it is when you take that thing you see from the outside you internalize it that the inner man will become weak and now you'll speak something outside that shows weakness what the Lord is telling us is that it's not what you see on the outside that makes you fail. It is not what people uh, want and they demonstrate and then that eventually makes you to uh, fret and worry and you become anxious and you forget yourself. It's not that. It is because you took that thing from outside and you internalized it and your inner man then becomes weak and the weakness is translated back outside. But when the Spirit of God strengthens your inner man, whatever is happening, whatever the world might think you ought to think about and whatever the devil has an intention you don't you say no that's not for me christ lives on the inside of me when uh, something like failure uh, uh, goes through your ear as if you ought to fail how can i christ lives on the inside of me this kind of thing came last year, two years ago, and you were 
down totally completely down then you say that that was that time that time i didn't remember that christ lives on the inside of me and as you know that christ lives on the inside of you he will energize you in the inner man that amen is what that's like the one you gave on friday give the one of a new day the Lord will strengthen you in the inner man. Yeah. You know, there, there are some scriptures that we we'll find there in the word, we we'll read, we we'll can even quote the word, but because we have not given that to our inner our body with good, good food, and the body becomes strong. We feed ourselves every day and the body becomes very good. But the man on the inside is hungry, is thirsty, is weak. And we don't give him the food of the soul, the meal for the inner man. And so as the outward man is growing, because we feed the outward man the inner man is weak is fainting what if you didn't eat for one whole day for one whole week for one whole month your body too will be weak what if your inner man is not being fed by the appropriate food you know as adults there is junk junk food that we eat, all it does is to give us a more cholesterol. All it does is to give us starch. And it makes us, it makes our body not function properly. What if you're only eating junk? You are eating the interpretation of the Bible by people that do not have the conviction of the New Testament. That's why our inner man is weak. But when you bring that inner man and you feed that inner man with the food that strengthens the inner state. Look at verse 20 here in uh, chapter 3 verse 20. It says, now unto him that is able. What if you just stop there and you feed your inner man now, today? At this present time, this morning, at the time I'm reading this, he that is able, and then you go through, is able to get us through the Red Sea, is able to get water out of that rock, is able to bring a food, the manna for everyone, every time for 40 years, is able to make us cross Jordan, is able to stop the sun by the command of Joshua, and to stop the moon over there, he is able to keep us at 85, I was 40 years at that time when Moses sent us out and now after 45 years I am four score and five I am still as strong as I was the God that is able if you meditate on that and you say that can happen to me God has not changed he did it before he will do it now he is able to do able to do this is a God of action it doesn't keep quiet when I am sick it doesn't keep quiet when something uh, traumatic is happening to me he is able to do he's able to do all things he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think my petition what i'm asking is like a child's play is too small for god i'm telling an accomplished engineer to come and repair the, uh, the the spoke of a bicycle is greater than that all the thing i'm asking is able to do all that but he's able to do abundantly above 
exceedingly above all that I ask even the things I cannot ask and only thinking I'm only thinking do I know that my thoughts can be prayer do I know that my thinking can be prayer do I know my desires even before I kneel down even before I stand up even before I quote verbally and openly any scriptures what I am just thinking you can do it I said you can do it and then he says according to the power look at that according not according to my limitation according to the power that worketh in ah that power is in me already that ability is in me already and that divine possibility is in me already according to the power that worketh in us when i study like that personally when i read like that i am giving my inner man the food that will strengthen my inner man we're coming to point number three now point number three is the transferable ministry of teaching and training his saints or training teaching his servants three things we're looking at here now we're looking at number one the uh, transferable ministry of teaching and training the saints and the servants number one the ministry of teaching by christ number two the mandate to teach that mandate coming from christ and number three the maturing and training for christ number one number one is the ministry of teaching by christ we're looking at matthew chapter 7 verse 28 it says and it came to pass when jesus had ended these sayings the people were astonished at his doctrine look at verse 29 in verse 29 for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes when you teach you have studied the word and you are giving the word out don't belittle yourself don't contradict yourself and don't make yourself ineffective you read a verse you see i'm going to give you all i know in this verse please bear with me i am not like pastor so and so why not and if you are not now why did you have to say that i'm going to you know explain to you this with the limitation of the knowledge i have please accept me the way i am i'm not normally a person that understands deeply why did you have to say that you are standing for christ say what you will say if it's not enough the holy ghost will add to it <laughs> say what you understand from this verse as you say it don't say well if you have a better idea um, you can't see me at the end of the meeting but i've told you all that i know and i'm, I'm humble enough to tell you that you know this is who i am a child of the king a follower of the conqueror the one that has the captain living on the inside of him christ the teacher lives inside you project that project that don't project any other thing and the lord will affirm the word of your mouth in jesus name he taught them as one having authority. You know, somebody having authority when you talk, that's the way you stand. That's the way you look. You look at the faces of the people. Are you intimidated? No. You are the one having the stage at that time. And you are the one that God has commissioned 
to teach us at that time when you stand stand like a commissioned minister commanded compelled minister the lord will make you effective the authority is not personal authority it's the authority of christ you stand in the stead of christ and the lord will back you up we're looking at number two there number two we're looking at the mandate to teach and that mandate is coming from christ no who has commanded you who has put you in place and because it is god the one that has authority in heaven and on earth that has put you there you will do well i will do well but i feel unqualified we don't walk by feeling we we'll walk by faith there are situations where you might not have what you need to have the lord will supply some time ago i was invited to britain some years now something had happened here that a british person an evangelist that he saw when he came to nigeria and he was a member of the board of trustees for a pentecostal church and because of what he saw here he invited me to their convention and the ministers were all there i've never been in a crowd like that all of them white and you feel different and sometimes when you feel different like that it's like what am i going to tell them somebody else had asked me a question well uh, in that country again all white and some of them had never seen any black man actually i'm not black i think it's brown <laughs> And so many wonderful things happened. And the ministers gathered. They wanted to ask me a question. And the Lord said, don't worry. When they are going to ask you a question, it is not you. There is somebody living on the inside of you that has answers to every question. Amen. Amen. A question I've never heard. The man raised up. I said, yes. So he said, why are you black like this? <laughs> I thought he was going to ask a question from the Bible. Without thinking, without searching my brain to bring out what I'd learned before, I just pointed to the keyboard in, the, you know, in that place. I said, look at that keyboard. You have white and you have black keys. And I said, <clears throat> I hear myself saying that God has a music he has never played. And he wants to play that music for the world to hear. And he has to use the white keys and the black keys to produce a miracle a music you never had that answer went straight into their hearts and they invited me back and then they invited people like me back and now we have a church in that country don't be embarrassed the one that has all authority lives on the inside of you. I told you about that man that invited me back to their convention. And after I taught them about the gifts of the Spirit, nine of them, we don't have time now, and uh, I taught them everything I, you know, the Lord put in my heart, a pastor invited me to... Uh, the, to his own local church 
And so I went to the church. And the pastor put me to stay in the house of the assistant pastor. And so there, well, well, you know, eat and do everything. And then I go to the meeting and beautiful things happened. And on Friday, the final meeting was to have there. Uh, the pastor sat me down and said, all these manifestations, how do they happen? So I went into scriptures with him and we prayed together. Then in the evening, we got to the church. As we got to the church, remember we're talking about teaching and training. When we got there, I told him, when I was going to preach that I will preach tonight but you will pray for the sick just like you see me do we discussed in the house we discussed earlier in the day so you will do it and so I finished preaching and when I finished preaching I now announced that today pastor so and so the assistant pastor I was staying with will pray for you he came to the pulpit and he said, let us pray. And then he started praying like he was praying before. So because I was behind him, I pulled his, um, his uh, coat and I said, don't say I tell you, remove the microphone. There's somebody there having this challenge. Say it and then pray. When you finish praying, don't say, are you killed? You say, you are healed let me see and so he repeated what i said and when he did that person raised up his hand and he prayed and then he said healed aren't you and the fellow waved the hand i am healed the people clapped and so he was uh, he was thinking again i was standing there and i pulled this uh, you know coat by the hand i said there's somebody there having this challenge and that problem don't say i say just say it and he said it and he said where are you raise up your hand and the fellow raised up his hand and he he was healed that after one and two he didn't need me to pull his shirt anymore he just said there is somebody here this is the problem you have where are you raise up your hand and he raised up his hand and another one and another one and miracles began to happen through his ministry i'm transferring something to you the pastor, his own pastor, said, What have you done to my assistant? What am I going to do now? I say, He got in, you get in. That's what I'm telling you now. Get in. Get in. Where are you? Stand up on your feet. Get in now get it you can you can you can by the power of the almighty that comes and lives and dwells in you now you can what you have never done before you can the prayer you have never prayed before you can you can you can you can not how you feel is what you believe he that believeth in me the works that i do he will do that authority is passed on to you that anointing is passed on to you that mandate is passed on to you you can you can don't cut yourself short you can don't look at the past failure you can and don't look at your comfort zone or discomforting zone you can you can you can those people are not born evangelists they receive the word they believe the word you can
Nobody is born a doctor. Nobody is born an engineer. Nobody is born a teacher. Nobody is born an evangelist. Nobody is born an apostle. It's when you receive what the Lord has offered. And you know you can. This is your day. Christ liveth in you. It's your time. Christ dwelleth in you. Act it out. Show it forth. Represent him. You are the ambassador of Christ. A woman, yes, ambassador. A man, yes, ambassador. A new vessel, yes, an ambassador. Use the words you never used. Say the word of Christ. By the Spirit. By the Holy Ghost. Humble. Yes. An ambassador. Gentle. Yes. An ambassador. A new anointing, a new power, a new authority, a new activity, a new breakthrough, an ambassador. In Jesus' name we pray. The Lord will fill you to overflowing. Not what you thought you could do or you couldn't do. What heaven knows you can do, you will do. You will not be limited and tied to the failure of the past. You come to the success of a new day. Are you a teacher? Maybe you say no, but the greatest of teachers with greatest authority lives inside you. Do you have knowledge? Maybe not enough as you evaluate, but the knowledge of the holy, the knowledge of the supreme, the knowledge of the Holy Ghost will be transferred into your heart. Yeah. You will not talk as you used to talk. You will not feel like you used to feel. You will not confess weakness like you used to confess. You will not expect failure like you used to expect. New life. New anointing. New power. New authority. New success. New victory. Raise up that hand in a new way with an expectation. Something you never imagined 
will come upon your life. Father, we bless you today. We know what you have told us. We know what you have done. We know the anointing that comes now. The authority that comes now upon every minister, brother, every minister, sister, upon everyone here. When those who want to join you were in the upper room, the power, the fire did not come only on a few of them. Not even the 11, the 12, all of them, everyone here, everyone there, everywhere. Lord, I pray there is new anointing, a new authority, a new understanding, a new power. Come upon everyone in Jesus' name. Take the weakness of the past away. The emptiness of the past, take it away. And the humiliating confession we used to make. In Jesus' name. Newly transformed ministers. Men and women. Newly given authority. Newly given power. Let it come on everyone in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, I hear you saying, I give everyone here the power. I give everyone here the key. I give everyone here the success and the victory and the triumph of ministry in Jesus' name. Lord, as your people are marching out like champions and they're marching out like captains in authority and they're marching out with what you have given. I pray, Lord, everywhere they go, they'll be successful for you. Triumphant for you. Victorious for you. And everyone will come back with testimony. You gave me. I said it. I operated it. And it's exactly as you have said. The presence of the Lord go with you. The power of the Lord go with you. And the possibilities in the Lord go with everyone. Thank you, Lord. We know it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. The Lord bless everyone.